Hello there, Master Hellish here. Welcome back to my Open TTD tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at vehicle groups and vehicle timetables. So if you're just here for timetables, jump forward to six and a half minutes. First up is the vehicle groups, and here you can see we've got a number of road vehicles going between three towns. We've got Hellishville, Like Time, and Subscribe City. They're all going between the different ones, and what we've got is three lots of shared orders. We've got five vehicles going from Hellishville to Like Town, five going from Like Town to Subscribe City, and five going from Subscribe City to Hellishville in a nice little triangle. If we click the vehicle buttons up here, we can see all of our road vehicles. You can see we've got 15 of them. Now, you can put these vehicles into groups. The grouping's on the left-hand side of the vehicle section. So you can see at the minute we've got all road vehicles, that's a default group, and ungrouped road vehicles, another default group. So the options for vehicle groups are all down here. You can see here there's a number of options. The first one is create a group, so we'll do that. When you first create a group, it asks you to rename it. This one's currently group zero. So if we call it Dave, it's now called Dave, and that's our starting group. Now I might decide that I want all my road vehicles that are going between two particular places to go into group Dave, so we'll do that. Now normally you would name these groups something a little bit more sensible, but you can call them whatever you like. Now here you can see I'm just dragging the vehicles into Dave from the all road vehicles group. So we've got the all road vehicles group highlighted here, it's in white. We could go to the ungrouped ones and now you can see that we've only got 10 in there. We're missing the first five and that's because now they're in Dave. And you can see that the road vehicle group actually appears at the top of the vehicle information as well in that screen. And these road vehicles are actually doing quite well considering I just threw them down for a tutorial. Anyway, so um, we now have our group Dave. What can we do with our group Dave? Well, one thing we could do is delete it, but we won't do that just yet. We can change the name. So we can call it Bob. Make it much more realistic. And, and another thing that we can do is change the colour. So if we click on this icon here, it brings up the colour scheme for our particular com uh, company for this particular group. And we can say that these road vehicles here in this group, well, maybe we don't want them to be the default colour. Maybe we want these ones to be red because they're a special service, the Bob service. And if we just move that down here, you can see that now some of these road vehicles are now red. It's an easy way to change the colour of groups of vehicles. So that can be nice for just visual want or if you have a special service that you want to keep an eye on. So here you can see it's quite easy to see which road vehicles are all going around um, as part of that group. What else can you do with groups? Well, you can use all the manage options down here. So because now we've got the group selected and not all road vehicles, um, the actions that we do down at the bottom here, like replace, send for servicing, send to depot, add shared vehicles, remove all shared vehicles, um, just apply to the group that we're working with. Now these two at the bottom here that add shared vehicles and remove sh all vehicles are actually the group options. You don't get them when you're in the standard view here. You just get replace, send for servicing. So if I wanted to send all of the Bob vehicles for servicing, we can do that. So we can just go send for servicing. And what we should see now, and I'll just fast forward slightly, is we should see all the red ones dart into depots. We've got one down here, just going into a depot. We've got a couple up here, just going into a depot. They'll go in there and service. This one here, Road Vehicle 5, he's probably on the way to a depot somewhere, and he'll go and service as well. So that is groups in a nutshell. That's pretty much there. We're going to show you a couple of other quick little things with groups before we go on. Um, one of the things you can do is add vehicles. Um, so we'll just quickly add a new a group this one we'll call it uh, Timmy and Timmy uh, has got nothing in it yet but what we'll do is we'll add one vehicle to it so what we got here road vehicle 10 yes that's a good idea we'll go down here find road vehicle 10 and we'll drag him into Timmy now what you can do is because I've given all these road vehicles shared orders and remember shared orders are fantastic but here we have Timmy in, a, in a, a Timmy group, and we've got Road Vehicle 10 in. One of the things that we can do to bring all the road vehicles in nice and quickly is use those options I mentioned earlier, add shared vehicles. So now all vehicles that had shared orders with Road Vehicle 10 are also pulled into the Timmy group, which I will change the colours of. Uh, so um, Timmy, we're going to change Timmy's 
come on. There we go. So we're going to change Timmy's to yellow. There we go. So now you can see we've got red, yellow, and blue vehicles going around. You can color code them if you want, or you can leave them the same. So grouping, um, a brilliant way to manage vehicles in groups. Not 100% necessary, for my opinion. You can get away with most things just by using shared orders. However, a good way to group things together. And the last thing I'll show you is deleting a group. So we no longer want the Timmy group. Remove the Timmy group, and you can see that they all now lose their colours. They go back to being blue and go back into the ungrouped road vehicles category. So, in a nutshell, that is groups. Okay, and now on to timetables. Now, timetables are not as difficult as what some people may think. There's a few key things to remember, but then you're pretty much on your way. We're going to use Hellish City as an example here. We've got four bus stations in the various different corners of the city. And I'm also going to make the buildings transparent so that we can see the vehicles driving around quite nicely. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new bus. So I'm going to go to new bus, choose one, and buy the vehicle. Once we've got the vehicle, I'm going to give it the orders to go to the four different places. So we're going to go here, we're going to go there, we're going to go down to Hellish City East, and we're also going to go up here to Hellish City Woods. Now, once I've done that, I go back into the order screen, and you can see this button in the top right hand corner here, timetable. That's how you access the timetables. So it's the show vehicle orders button, and then click the timetable. It switches it from orders to timetable, and here you can see the timetable. So you can expand this window, have a good look at it. You can see here it's got the list of places it's going to visit as well as the travel time between them. So to fill this in you uh, you can either select the various different items in the list and tell the game how long you want the vehicle to perform each task. So how long to spend loading and unloading at the station and how long to time uh, travel between them. Now this is very rarely done. People usually use the autofill option to begin, and this is how you do it. So before the vehicle is set off, you just click autofill and then send it on its way. Now, I'm gonna fast forward the game so that we can see the vehicle rushing around between the four different places. There we go. And you can see that as it's going round, it's starting to fill in the timetable. Now, the vehicle's a new vehicle, so it's unlikely to break down, and we haven't got any other road vehicles in the way that are causing any delays. So this route that it's doing now is kind of an ideal situation. It could take longer for the road vehicle to get around. And once it's done one full loop, it will have a timetable. I'm just going to stop the vehicle for now and pause the game so we can sort things out. Thank you, notifications. We don't need that. So you can see here now it says that it stops for one day at each station and it travels nine days between three of them and ten days between the fourth. Now, it's only spending one day there because it didn't have any cargo to pick up. If there's a load of passengers there, it would take longer to unload and load. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that time. I'm going to say, well, actually, a bit of a luxury. Let's say spend five days loading and unloading. Now, these times you will just have to get a feel of. So it depends on your network. It depends on what, why you're doing the timetable. There's, there's a whole host of factors as to how long you might want them to stay there. It's a bit of a tweak and experience thing. And the more you do timetables, the more you will get the answer, the right option straight away. Now, these travel times, they're quite good. But again, we're going to add some leeway into them. Because, like I said before, if the vehicle breaks down, we want the vehicle to be able to catch back up again. Now, if the vehicle only needs to load and unload for three days, it can spend two days catching up and leave early. So, if a vehicle falls out of sync with its timetable, it will try and catch back up. You can see here it says currently this vehicle is running on time, and it tells you how long the timetable takes to complete. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change these travel times, okay? We're going to change them to 15 days. I'm going to give them a massive amount of leeway. You may only really want to start with two, maybe three days, depending how far they're going. In fact, in a small city situation like this, you might only want to give them one. But I'm just going to quickly change all these to 15. I want to give them lots of leeway to start off with. And what I might do then is narrow it down a little bit in the future. There we go. 
So now we've got a timetable which takes a total of 80 days to complete. The next thing I'm going to do is get some more road vehicles. We're not going to send this guy off just yet. So back to the depot and I'm going to clone and hold control to get shared orders with this road vehicle. So we're going to unpause the game and, and unpause the game and just clone them out. So we've got four road vehicles and we're going to send them on the way. Now the game's still paused. There we go. So those road vehicles are now longer going to, not going to go anywhere. What we need to do now is then pass these um, this timetable to all the other vehicles. And if we have a look at the other vehicles, you'll see that if the look at the timetable, they do actually have the timetable. And this is because it was shared orders. But we want these vehicles to stagger themselves in an effective way. We want them all to go at um, different rates. We don't want them all doing the same timetable at the same time. We don't want them all to be going to Hellish City West and then all of them to go into Hellish City and so forth. So to stagger them, we can get the first vehicle, look at its timetable, and use this start date option. Now, if we just click the start date, that will set the start date for the vehicle. And because they've got shared orders, the game might calculate it correctly, but the best way to do it is to hold control. If you hold control, it sets the starting point of this timetable and then distributes it to all the vehicles shared it, sharing this order evenly based on their arrival order and if this order uh, and this order is then all timetable throughout so if we've got four vehicles going round a timetable that's 80 days long it will stagger them by 20 days so at the minute we're the 14th of may so i'm going to hold control click start date and i'm going to change this to the first of june give us a good bit of breathing space there we go now the only other thing I'm going to do is also tell the first vehicle to go to Hellish City West. Start the beginning of the timetable. So all the vehicles now are all about to go to Hellish City West. Okay. And they all have the timetable set. And as they're going, we will see that they're staggered. So we can see in the timetable, we've got this 80-day um, cycle to go around the city for the road vehicles. And we can see uh, that the start date for this road vehicle is the first. Okay, the first of the sixth. If we look at the next road vehicle and look at their timetable, uh, this one is the second of the fourth. So I'm guessing that this one is not the second one in the loop. The loop of the vehicles does not always match the order of which you created them. So if we look at road vehicle three and look at that timetable, this one's the second of the fourth. And if we look at this one over here, 22nd of the fourth, sorry and road vehicle 4 start date oh, didn't mean to do that is currently the 12th okay so it's working out the the staggering it's it's doing it a number of days after each other uh so we should see these vehicles all nice and laid out so looks pretty good to me overall let's get these road vehicles running we're going to unpause the game and we're going to fast forward and let them sort themselves out. So hopefully, yep, well, road vehicles won't quite stack up and get too clogged up at the beginning. You don't want them to do that. But they'll be all on their way now. Now it's going to take them some time to get themselves all sorted out. Some of them might be running a little bit early. Some of them might be running a little bit late. If we look at this vehicle here um, and we click on its orders with timetable, you can see that this vehicle is currently running 19 days late that's not really a problem because uh that we've put a lot of leeway into this timetable so you can see now already after that stop it's only 11 days late and now it's only five days late two days late and it will be catching right up soon so all the road vehicles now are catching up that one arrived three days early now but it will wait until the right point now what do we notice? Well, we've got a lovely timetabled bus service now. You can see that all four buses are waiting until the same points and crossing over in the city and all heading back. Now, one of them went to the depot then, so it will be slightly behind schedule, but it will catch back up again. And we should see that all four road vehicles leave the stations at the same time and go on to their next destination. I find this beautiful and hypnotic. That's beside the point but this is how timetables work you just have to get one vehicle 
set it to go on its auto route. Once it's automatically filled up that timetable, you adjust it to how you want it to be. And then clone out your vehicles, set a start date, and off they go. Now, there is a little bit more in-depth information on this on the wiki, but I've given you what you need to know to get started on this. And you should all be alright. Now, the, you can do a wealth of different things with timetables, and really it's up to you to be as creative as to how to use the timetables as you like. I'm not going to tell you every single situation that you may use timetables, but this is one of them, getting vehicles to all arrive at the same time. Now, what happens if I double the number of vehicles on this route? Well, it's actually quite cool. So I'm going to clone this vehicle and set it out so we've got eight of them in total. Then what we're going to do is get those vehicles set out on their way. And we're going to find uh, a road vehicle, do the timetable, and we're going to sort it out and reset the start date. So at the minute, we're in January, the middle of January. I'm going to set the start date to February the 1st. I just like to do it like that. And I'm going to make sure I hold control while I do this. So February the 1st, set date. So all of these vehicles now have had their timetables reset. Let's see what happens now we've got eight. Now they might clog up to begin with because the stations that we've got here are only, it's only an example. This isn't necessarily a good layout to do in a city. Um, it might actually, it looks like it's actually making relatively good money. Um, but there we go. In fact, let's, let's have a quick look at the money situation. Yeah, we're actually making a profit on this example. So, once all these vehicles have caught up on their timetables and all got in sync, you'll see something similar to what we had previously. We'll have probably four vehicles all leaving the stations at the same time and crossing over. Now, we're nearly there, I think. And remember, we're running this extra fast. But, we're yeah, we're pretty much there. We've now got a number of vehicles all leaving the stations at the same time, but also we've got a vehicle at the station. And this is because the game has spaced out all eight vehicles along that 60-day route. Sorry, 80-day route. And this is another brilliant way of making sure you've always got a vehicle sat at the station loading and unloading. Having a vehicle there at all times increases the ratings and that increases the amount of people and, and profit that you'll get in the future. So this is a good way to make sure that you've always got something at a station at all times. Well, we're going to leave that there for the timetables and groups. So that's the end of this particular tutorial video. If you've got any questions about timetables, please pop them down in the comments, along with any requests of things you'd like to see in the tutorials in the future. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video or it's been useful, please give it a like. And for more OpenTTD and other gaming videos, please subscribe. I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. Goodbye.